Today we're recapping all the events of Dark Seasons 1 and 2. There's a lot to cover, so feel free to use the chapter markers in the description to jump around to key moments in the series. With that, let's get into it. On June 21st, 2019, in the small German town of Winden, a man named Michael Conwald takes his own life. He leaves behind a letter in an envelope marked, Do Not Open Before November 4th, 10.13pm. He is mourned by his son Jonas, his wife Hannah, and his mother Ines, who is now in possession of the letter. November 4th arrives. The town of Winden, normally a safe and quiet place, is on edge after the disappearance of a boy named Eric Obendorf. This is the first incident of its kind in Winden, at least since 33 years earlier, when Mads Nielsen disappeared. Less than five months have passed since his father's suicide, but a traumatized Jonas returns to school. Thankfully, his best friend Bartosz is the only one who knows Jonas has been in therapy the last two months. In fact, Bartosz concocted a cover story, telling everyone Jonas has been in a two-month exchange program in France. Jonas's return to normalcy is made more difficult by finding that Bartosz and Marta began a relationship in his absence. It would seem Marta has moved on from what happened between her and Jonas last summer. During the school day, Bartosz hatches a scheme. Apparently, the missing boy Eric Obendorf was a drug dealer, and Bartosz knows where he kept his stash. So later tonight, Bartosz, Jonas, and Marta will head to the Winden Cave and find Eric's stash. They recruit their friend Magnus to help. Jonas and Marta are the first to arrive at their meeting spot. Marta begins telling Jonas about her and Bartosz, but he tells her it's okay. She doesn't need to explain. Then Marta comments that she feels a strange sense of deja vu, and Jonas jokes that it's a glitch in the Matrix. As the children embark on their journey to Winden Cave, the parents of the town attend a meeting to discuss Eric's disappearance. The meeting is interrupted when police chief Charlotte's father-in-law, Helge, arrives, yelling, it's going to happen again, over and over. Back in the woods, Magnus arrives with his younger brother, Mikkel, followed by Bartosz. Mikkel greets Jonas with one of his patented ultimate fist bumps. When they arrive at the cave, they learn Eric's drugs have already been found by Francisca Doppler, the police chief's daughter. After she and Magnus flirted earlier in the day, she overheard their plans and decided to get there first. While fighting over the drugs, a loud noise emits from the cave, sending everyone running. Jonas is behind the others with Mikael when he suddenly trips. After regaining his balance and collecting himself, he finds that Mikael is gone. Alone in the woods, Jonas hears someone call his name. He turns and sees a ghostly vision of his father, covered in blood or some other dark substance. Jonas runs to catch up with his friends waiting on the street. Mikael's father, Ulrich, and the other parents of the town rush from their assembly to find their children waiting outside the woods. After losing his brother Mads 33 years earlier, Ulrich refuses to lose a son too. He begins a relentless pursuit to find Mikael, starting with a search of Winden Cave. During all this, the clock has struck 10.13 p.m., meaning it's time for Enos to open the envelope containing her son's final words. She reads and learns the truth about Michael Conwald, a truth that Jonas does not yet know about his father, but will soon. That night, Ulrich, who is a police officer himself, and others from the force are unable to locate Mikkel. However, the next morning, in a search led by police chief Charlotte Doppler, a young boy's body is found. Ulrich quickly determines it is not his son Mikkel, but strangely, the boy is dressed as though he stepped out of the 80s. As the search party continues, a stranger watches from a distance. While the town of Winden reels from the news of Mikkel's disappearance and the discovery of a body, the other missing boy, Eric Obendorf, is alive. He is held captive in a strange, windowless room containing a device that looks eerily similar to an electric chair. Eric is strapped into the chair and metal clasps are placed in front of his eyes before the machine is activated. Rattled by Mikkel's disappearance and the vision of his father, Jonas visits the room where Michael hanged himself. Laying down, staring at the ceiling that held the noose, Jonas notices a loose wooden board. 
Opening it, he finds a map of the intricate cave network beneath Winden. The words, where is the crossing, are written across it. That evening, Jonas asks his mother Hannah if she misses Michael, and distantly she replies that she misses a notion of him. She doesn't believe he ever revealed his true self. Jonas is unaware that his mother has been sleeping with Ulrich, who is husband to Katerina, Jonas' school principal. The next morning, Jonas rebukes his mother's suggestion that he skip school so they can spend quality time together. Instead, he heads to the Winden Cave with his father's map in hand. Meanwhile, Ehrlich Nielsen relentlessly searches for his son, Mikkel. In the caves, he finds a metal door leading to the town's nuclear plant, welded shut. He begs the plant's director, Alexander Tiedemann, to let him search for his son on plant grounds, but ultimately is forced to pursue a search warrant. This takes time, which is difficult for the impatient Ulrich. Ulrich's other children, Marta and Magnus, isolate themselves from friends and family as they struggle in their own ways to deal with the missing sibling. Ulrich finds comfort with his wife Katerina, but also suspicion as she begins to see he's hiding something from her. She does not yet know that Ulrich is carrying on an affair with Jonas's mother, Hannah. The police chief, Charlotte Doppler, calmly carries out the investigation into Eric and Mikkel's disappearances and the body found in the woods. As the body is examined, they find that the boy's eyes are completely burned and his ear canals destroyed. Besides Charlotte, Ulrich, and the Winden police force, it seems there is another carrying on his own investigation. The stranger who earlier watched the search party from afar takes residence in Winden's hotel. The hotel owner, Regina Tiedemann, is suspicious of the man and the strange way he is dressed, but desperate for business allows him to stay. In his room, the stranger pins to the wall images of labyrinths, strange drawings, and a newspaper article about Mikkel. The headline on the article reads, Where is Mikkel? The man crosses out the word where and in its place writes when. 33 years earlier, Mikkel emerges from the cave and finds himself in 1986 Winden. Somehow, on the night of November 4th, 2019, Mikkel traveled through time to the year his uncle, Ulrich's brother Mads, disappeared. A confused Mikkel pays a visit to his family home, only to find his distraught grandmother, Jana. She assumes this strange boy must have answers about her missing son, Mads, but Mikkel, of course, has nothing for her. Unsure where else to go, Mikkel heads to school seeking Katerina, his mother, the principal. He finds her, but she is currently a student with no interest in a confused child. Finally, Mikkel ends up at the hospital where he is taken care of by a kind, hard-working nurse named Ines Conwald. At the same time, Egon Tiedemann, currently failing to locate Ulrich's missing brother Mads, is called to investigate a strange case of 33 sheep that died suddenly. Similar to the dead boy found in 2019, the eardrums of these sheep are destroyed. The sudden death of animals is something the town's residents will experience many times over the years. Egon Tiedemann will witness this firsthand later when dead birds rain upon him. Regina, the hotel owner in 2019, and mother to Bartos, also has family ties that play an important role in 1986. Her mother, Claudia, has just been promoted as the first female director at the nuclear plant. On her way into the plant for her first day in the new role, she's greeted by Helga, a cleaner at the plant and son of the previous director. In 2019, as an old man, he will interrupt the town's meeting with his shouts that it's going to happen again. But in 1986, a dementia-free Helga gives Claudia a gift in celebration of her promotion. Getting up to speed in her new role, Claudia quickly realizes that the financials of the plant differ significantly from what's been communicated to the public. She visits the previous director, Helga's father, Bernd Doppler, and learns that this is part of a cover-up. Mr. Doppler has propped up the plant for the supposed good of the town. To help Claudia understand the truth, Bernd takes Claudia on a trip through the woods to a gorge. She traverses deep into the cave where she sees stacks of nuclear waste barrels kept hidden from the public. 
Soon, this area will be locked behind a metal door, which will be welded shut. In 2019, in his search for Mikkel, Ulrich will find this door. After an eye-opening day at work, Claudia unwraps Helga's gift and sees it is a copy of the book A Journey Through Time by H.G. Townhouse. The same book can be found in the Stranger's Hotel Room in 2019. On November 6, 2019, two days since Mikkel's disappearance, Jonas heads to Winden Cave to search for The Crossing, mentioned on his father's map. He has little luck. Giving up, Jonas leaves the cave and finds a red string tied in a knot on his bike. He doesn't know it yet, but this was left here by the stranger. The next day, Eric Obendorf's phone rings. Bartosz, in possession of Eric's drugs and phone from the cave, answers it and speaks to a man named Noah. Later, Bartosz's best friend Jonas pays a visit. Bartosz complains that he can't get a hold of his girlfriend Marta. Jonas reassures him that she'll reach out eventually. Jonas fails to mention that while ignoring Bartosz, Marta has been reaching out to him. Jonas has been ignoring her texts. Before Jonas leaves, Bartosz confides that he managed to get in contact with Eric Obendorf's drug dealer, Noah, the man who called earlier. Jonas agrees to join Bartosz in meeting the supposed dealer later that evening. With his father's memory still haunting him, Jonas pays a visit to Michael Conwald's grave. As he sits on a bench staring at his father's gravestone, he is paid an unsettling visit by the stranger. The stranger tells Jonas that they don't know each other, but he knew Jonas's father. He goes on to say that life is a labyrinth. Some people wander around their whole lives looking for a way out, but there's only one path and it leads you ever deeper. You don't understand it until you've reached the center. Death is incomprehensible, but you can make peace with it. Till then, you should ask yourself each day if you've made the right decisions. The stranger leaves a confused Jonas behind. That night, rather than join Bartosz in meeting Noah, like Jonas promised, he heads to school and watches Marta perform in a play. In the play, Marta delivers a powerful monologue, saying that nothing changes but always repeats in a cycle. One fate is tied to the next, and knots cannot be undone but can be severed. In her dressing room afterwards, Jonas comes clean to Marta, explaining how he wasn't in an exchange program in France, as Bartosz claimed. In fact, he was in therapy, dealing with the post-traumatic stress of his father's suicide. Jonas asks Marta why she called him that morning rather than Bartosz. Then, they kiss, reigniting their passion from the previous summer. The stranger asks the hotel owner Regina if she can deliver a package for him to Jonas Conwald. Returning home from Marta's play, Jonas finds it waiting for him. It contains an orb, which Jonas realizes is a futuristic flashlight of sorts. It also contains a Geiger counter. Most importantly, it contains an envelope marked with the words, Do not open before November 4th, 10.13 p.m. It is the same envelope, containing the same message read days earlier by Jonas's grandmother, Ines. It is his father's goodbye letter. Jonas reads it. Dear Jonas, by the time you read this, everything will have happened, irrevocably. It can no longer be changed. I would have liked to explain things to you sooner, but I hope once you understand how everything is connected, you will understand my decision. The truth is a strange thing. You can try to suppress it, but it will always find its way back to the surface. We make a lie into our truth in order to survive. We try to forget until we can't anymore. We don't know even half of the mysteries of this world. We are wanderers in the dark. This is my truth. On November 4th, 2019, I traveled through time to the year 1986. The boy from the future stayed, and in time he became a man. Mikael became Michael, who never knew where he belonged. By the time you read this, I'll already be gone, both as a boy and as a man. I hope you can forgive me. Everything is connected. The letter is signed Mikkel slash Michael. Jonas doesn't know it yet, but he just began a journey that will span decades and determine the fate of our world. A day earlier, while Jonas explores the Winden Caves, Police Chief Charlotte Doppler is busy. 
Besides the growing pile of missing children cases, she has to deal with her family. There is tension between her and her husband Peter as they discuss carpool plans. Her daughters fight as Francesca accuses her younger daughter Elizabeth of stealing her lipstick. Francisca believes Elizabeth plays innocent, taking advantage of the fact that she is deaf and only eight years old. On the way to school, Charlotte grabs the SD card out of a wildlife camera on the side of the road, then drops her daughter Elizabeth off at school, who quickly runs to her new boyfriend, Yasin. At the station, Charlotte learns that the boy dressed in 80s garb had red soil on his shoes, which did not match the area where he was found. The soil must have come from the crime scene. Checking the SD card, Charlotte sees that around the time Mikkel disappeared, Peter's car was the only one seen to drive nearby. Her suspicions of her husband grow further when she finds red soil at Peter's family cabin. Busy with her investigation, Charlotte asks Peter to pick their daughter Elizabeth up from school. However, when he arrives, he finds that she's already left on her own. This begins a frantic and fruitless search for Elizabeth. Hours later, Elizabeth shows up, back at Charlotte and Peter's home. She says she didn't want to wait anymore, so walked home on her own. On the way back, she was delayed because she met someone named Noah, someone who gave her a pocket watch with the inscription, For Charlotte. In the hospital, Peter's father, Helga, tells a nurse, I have to stop him. When asked who he needs to stop, Helga says Noah, the man who called Bartosz, claiming to be Eric's drug dealer, and the man who gave Elizabeth the pocket watch. The next day, Elizabeth's boyfriend Yasin is stopped in the woods by a man who claims to have been sent by Noah. Yasin promptly joins the growing list of boys who have disappeared from Winden. However, not all is sadness in the town of Winden, as Ulrich's son Magnus and Charlotte's daughter, Francisca, move beyond flirtation. A relationship begins to blossom. Love is in the air in 1986 as well. A young Ulrich and his future wife, Katerina, decide to take things to the next level and consummate the relationship. Unfortunately, Hannah, Ulrich's future mistress, is jealous. She spies on the two of them and falsely reports to the police that Ulrich forced himself on Katerina. As tensions grow for Ulrich in 1986, so do they in 2019. He attempts to distance himself from Hannah while he and his family deal with Mikkel's disappearance. However, this does not stop her from showing up at his house uninvited. Katerina's suspicions of an affair grow further. Reflecting on his life, Ulrich discusses with Charlotte how, after the failures of the investigation into his brother's disappearance decades earlier, he decided to become a cop, one that won't fail like the drunk, incompetent Egon did. He realizes, however, that he has inadvertently followed in Egon's footsteps. In 1986, Hannah, failing to capture Ulrich's attention, meets Mikkel, planting the seeds for their future relationship and marriage. In addition to meeting Hannah, Mikkel also meets the new priest from the parish of St. Christopher, a priest named Noah. He tells Mikkel that God has a plan for everyone, including Mikkel himself. 33 years later, Noah, in the guise of Eric's drug dealer, will also meet Bartosz and recruit him for a mysterious cause. Though 33 years have passed, Noah appears the same age as he did the day he met Mikkel. Looking through case files from the time of his brother's disappearance, Ulrich notices a discrepancy. His mother lied about his father Trant's whereabouts the night Mads disappeared. He confronts his father to no avail, but learns some important information from his mother Jana. She tells Ulrich that at the time in 1986, Trant was having an affair with Claudia, the nuclear plant's previous director. Jana lied to the police in order to cover up the affair. She also tells Ulrich that Claudia's daughter, Regina, was the last one to see Mads before he vanished. Regina, meanwhile, is having a tough day. Earlier, she received some bad news about her mammogram. So, she has little patience when Ulrich arrives to confront her. She also has a tense history with Ulrich. 33 years earlier, Ulrich and Katerina believed Regina was the one who falsely reported him to the police. They tormented her for this. 
Now, in 2019, Regina reveals the truth, that it was Hannah who reported him. Ulrich further confirms this by checking the case files. He confronts Hannah. Furious, he asks, how did your husband put up with you for so long? No wonder he couldn't take it anymore in the end, not realizing he is talking about his own son. Brooding over the mess of his life, Ulrich looks through old photographs. He sees one of his brother Mads and has a strange thought. He heads to the morgue to inspect the body of the boy found days earlier, the body inexplicably dressed in 80s clothing. Mads had a scar on his chin, which matches the scar on the body. Ulrich realizes that somehow he is looking at the unaged body of his younger brother Mads. He disappeared in 1986 and reappeared as a corpse here in 2019. Although Ulrich learned some truths today, others remain out of reach. For example, he doesn't know that his father, Trant, is currently meeting with Peter in the Doppler family bunker. That night, at 9.17 p.m., Jonas will enter the Winden Cave tunnels and cause a power surge. Trant will open a notebook and see that this power surge was expected at this precise time. Someone has given Peter and Trant this strange notebook. Someone who seems to have great knowledge of future events. The morning after Jonas received the package containing his father's suicide note, he makes another discovery. Someone has written, follow the signal on the map of Wyndon's cave that his father left behind. Later, he'll realize it was the stranger that left him this clue. Back in the Wyndon cave, Jonas follows the signal using the provided Geiger counter. This leads him to a metal door engraved with a Triketra symbol and the message, Sic Mundus Creatus Est. This same symbol appears on Trant and Peter's notebook. As Jonas enters the door, lights flicker throughout Winden. Reaching a fork in the tunnel, Jonas turns right. This leads to an exit very similar to the cave entrance, though the scenery is slightly different. Like Mikkel, Jonas has traveled through time to 1986. He finds his way to the hospital and eventually spots Mikkel, chatting with Jonas's future grandmother, Ines. He is intent on bringing Mikkel back to the present and setting things right. But before he can intervene, the stranger appears and explains, If you take Mikkel back, you're meddling in the sequence of events. Then your father never meets your mother. They don't fall in love or get married, do they? And you're never born. If you take him back now, you're erasing your own existence. The role you play in this is much bigger than you think. But every decision for something is a decision against something else, a life for a life. What will you decide? After his encounter with the stranger, Jonas abandons his plans and returns to 2019 through the cave. Back home, he finds that his mother Hannah is sad and lonely. Months earlier, she lost her husband, and now her emotional support, Ulrich, is avoiding her. Jonas comforts his mother, saying, I really think Dad loved you very much. They embrace... Then Jonas returns to the attic and burns the letter from his father. Meanwhile, Ulrich begins his own journey through time as he investigates the case files for his missing brother from 33 years ago. In 1986, investigating Mads' disappearance, Egon speaks with Helga. The night Mads vanished, Helga took a different route home than usual, avoiding the forest road. In his notebook, Egon writes, Why not forest road? something he intends to question further in a follow-up interview, which unfortunately will never occur as Helga dodges Egon's attempts to schedule it. In 2019, Ulrich sees the note, Why Not Forest Road, in the case files. He begins to suspect Helga is involved with the recent missing children. He shares his suspicions with Charlotte, the police chief, and Helga's daughter-in-law. However, she finds it deeply unlikely that a 75-year-old with dementia could be responsible for the kidnappings. Charlotte leaves Ulrich to continue her own investigation. With a search warrant finally in hand, she heads to the nuclear plant and finds the same gorge that Claudia entered in 1986, the one containing yellow barrels full of nuclear waste. However, the room is now empty. Alexander, the plant director, used the extra time from the delayed warrant to temporarily move the barrels. In their place, Charlotte only finds some yellow scraps and the other side of the metal door that blocked Ulrich days earlier. 
Undeterred by Charlotte's objections, Ulrich visits the nursing home and attempts to question an elderly Helga. Helga shouts, it was him, I know you, as though he recognizes and is frightened of Ulrich. As Helga's vitals spike, Ulrich is pulled out of the room. Helga mutters to himself that he can change the past. Seeing that Ulrich has not let go of the crazy idea that Helga is involved in the kidnapping, Charlotte suspends him from the force and sends him home. Waiting for Ulrich is his wife Katerina. He intends to apologize for being so absent lately, but Katerina is uninterested. Instead, she reveals that she put the pieces together and knows of his affair with Hannah. Ulrich attempts to explain or apologize, but is rebuked. Katerina tells him that his mother called looking for him, then leaves. Ulrich goes to his mother, Jana, again. She tells him that something strange happened. In 1986, one week before Mads disappeared, she saw a man arguing with a priest. The man's ear was scarred or disfigured, just like Helga's. This morning, Jana saw the same man out her window as though he hadn't aged a day. Charlotte begins to have her own suspicions about Helga. For example, why has he held on to his family's cabin all these years? The same cabin where his accident occurred, causing the scars on his ear and face. Charlotte questions her husband and Helga's son, Peter, about this, but he evades her questions. Inside the bunker by the cabin, Charlotte finds scraps of wallpaper. She doesn't know it, but this is the bunker where Eric Obendorf was held, where he was experimented on, and the man conducting those experiments was a younger Helga, working with the priest, Noah. This younger Helga recently traveled from 1986 to 2019 and was spotted by Ulrich's mother, Jana. Ulrich returns to the nursing home. Helga is missing, but looking through his things, Ulrich finds a small acorn figurine similar to the one used to lure Yasin days earlier. He also finds a copy of the book, A Journey Through Time, the same book Helga gifted to Claudia 33 years earlier. Finally, in the book, Ulrich finds a coin on a red cord, similar to the one worn around Mad's neck when his body was found. Ulrich notices Helga wandering into the night and follows him. As they walk through the woods, he calls Charlotte and leaves a message. Charlotte, the question isn't who abducted the children, but when. I was right, Helga Doppler. Not now, but in 1986. Call me back immediately when you get this. Ulrich follows Helga to the Winden Cave and to the same time tunnel Jonas discovered earlier. However, where Jonas took a right, Ulrich takes a left and finds himself not in 1986, but 1953. That year, two bodies belonging to young boys are discovered at the nuclear plant construction site. As a young Egon Tiedemann investigates, a child Helga watches. Egon's investigation will never reveal the truth that these bodies belong to Eric Obendorf and Yasin Frise, two of the children that vanished from Winden in 2019. Similar to Mads, their eardrums are destroyed and their faces are burned so no eyes are visible. Ulrich, getting his bearings after inadvertently time-traveling, runs into Agnes Nielsen and her son Trant. They are Ulrich's grandmother and father. He then heads to a clock shop where he finds H.G. Townhouse, author of A Journey Through Time. Townhouse is confused when Ulrich shows him the book. He has not yet written it. While there, two young girls arrive. One is Ulrich's mother Jana and the other is Ines the nurse who will adopt Mikkel in 1986. Ulrich overhears them discussing the bodies found at the construction site. Fearing that one of them belongs to Mikkel, he runs to the police station where he finds Egon. Although the bodies are unidentified, based on their appearance, Egon can confirm neither of them belong to Mikkel. Before taking off, Ulrich asks if Egon knows an old man named Helga Doppler. Confused, Egon points out that Helga is just a young boy, the son of nuclear plant director Burned Doppler. Ulrich takes off in search of this young Helga. Meanwhile, Helga arrives at Ulrich Nielsen's future home, where Egon Tiedemann and his wife Doris reside. Helga is there for math tutoring from Egon's daughter, Claudia. During the math lesson, Agnes and Trant arrive to inquire about rooms for rent. 
Doris, without thinking, asks Agnes about her husband and learns that he is dead. Some small talk later, Doris asks her daughter Claudia to take Trant on a tour of the neighborhood once she's done tutoring. On their tour, Claudia, her dog Gretchen, and Trant walk together. Helga follows behind. They end up at the Winden Cave, where Claudia tells Trant that kids often dare each other to go as far into the cave as they can. Before Trant accepts the dare, Claudia decides it's time to take Helga home. The two leave while Helga stays behind for a moment and throws a stick into the cave, which Gretchen chases. The dog disappears into the cave's darkness and is lost. Egon returns home to greet his wife Doris and meet the new tenant, Agnes. During their conversation, Doris and Agnes seem unable to stop glancing at one another. In their conversation, Agnes mentions that her grandmother was from Winden and always spoke highly of it. This is interrupted when Claudia returns, distraught over Gretchen's disappearance. Egon takes off to search for the missing pup. Outside the Doppler mansion, Ulrich finds Helga. He begins their conversation by handing him the coin hanging from a red cord. Helga hasn't seen it before. Ulrich then asks about the dead birds Helga has collected in a box. Did he kill them himself? No, they simply fell from the sky. They're so beautiful when they're dead, Helga says. After a manic search for his son, Ulrich finds himself face to face with a child he believes will grow up to become a kidnapper and a killer. If he kills Helga now in 1953, Eric, Yasin, and Mikael will be saved in 2019. But can Ulrich find it in himself to kill a child? Unfortunately for Helga, yes he can. Sensing danger, Helga runs, but is ultimately captured. Ulrich strikes the child's head with a rock over and over, then drags Helga's unconscious body into the Doppler family bunker. At the Tiedemann's home, Agnes and Doris grow closer. Agnes's son, Trant, examines cigarette burns on his arm. In the bunker, in an unknown time, an elderly Claudia looks at a wall decorated with pictures of Winden residents and strings between them. Also, plenty of weapons. While Ehrlich spoke to a confused H.G. Townhouse in 1953, one who had not yet written A Journey Through Time, the stranger converses with a more seasoned townhouse in 1986. They discuss many of the ideas from the book. Townhouse shows the stranger a drawing of the Triketra. Townhouse explains that wormholes connect not two, but three dimensions, as represented by the three overlapping shapes in the Triketra, future, past, and present. They also discuss the lunar-solar cycle, the idea that every 33 years, the cycle of the moon and sun match. And the number 33, Townhouse points out, appears in many other places. Jesus performed 33 miracles, 33 litanies of the angels, and more. Jonas adds that 33 is also the age at which the Antichrist begins his reign. Regarding cause and effect, the clockmaker points out, if a wormhole exists, everything is trapped in a mutually dependent time loop. Past affects future, while future also affects past. Eventually, the stranger confesses that this is not simply a theoretical conversation. The stranger has put these concepts into practice. He is from the future. The stranger pulls out a device and tells Townhouse he needs him to repair it. This device is a time machine capable of traveling 33 years into the future or past. It is also capable of recreating the explosion that, a few months earlier, created a wormhole by the nuclear plant. Townhouse, shocked, asks if the man intends on creating another wormhole. No, he intends to use the device to close the one that already exists. Unfortunately, Townhouse says he cannot repair the machine. The stranger insists, pointing out that Townhouse built the device himself. In fact, his initials are engraved on it. Townhouse asks the stranger to leave, and he does, but first says, This town is like a festering wound, and we're all part of it, but I can change it. Your device can change it. I've seen the future. I know what will happen. I have to set things right again, and you have to help me. After the stranger leaves, Townhouse pulls a device off his shelf and places it next to the one the man left behind. They are identical, though Townhouse's is far less worn than the stranger's. 
1953, Townhouse, in his shop, notices that Ulrich forgot his coat. In the pocket, Townhouse finds a smartphone from 66 years in the future. In the Tiedemann house, Doris tries on one of Agnes's dresses, providing ample opportunity for physical contact. When Doris asks Agnes about her husband, she says, He was a pastor, but I can't say he was a man of faith. He wasn't a good person. Sometimes I think it's good he's dead and that I'm free. Egon drives by the woods and notices Ulrich walking on the side of the road. Stained with blood from his recent murder attempt, Ulrich runs for the cave, hoping to return to his time, but is stopped just before reaching it. Helga is missing and Egon accuses Ulrich of having something to do with it. Further, he accuses Ulrich of murdering the two boys found at the construction site. Since the two boys are still dead, Ulrich must have failed in changing the future. Helga will still grow up and murder them. As Egon places him under arrest, Ulrich mutters to himself, but I changed it, but I changed it. In the Doppler family bunker, a wounded Helga wakes up. In 1986, Katarina is furious that Ulrich is still in lockup after someone told the cops he forced himself on her. Katarina promises Hannah that she'll clobber whoever told this lie. Deflecting suspicion, Hannah casually suggests that maybe Regina was responsible. Once Ulrich is freed, he and Katarina approach and intimidate Regina. Before they can hurt her, a stranger appears with a gun and saves her. The man is wounded and on the run from the law. Regina wants to take him to a hospital, but he refuses. Instead, she will take him home and stitch him up herself. She asks his name, and he says, Alexander. In 33 years, the two will be married, and she will be dying of cancer. Once healed, Alexander returns to the woods to bury a bag of evidence, his gun and a passport containing his real name, Boris Newald. The bag contains another passport belonging to an Alex Cooler. He keeps this one and adopts the new identity. He is unaware that Hannah is nearby and will retrieve the bag once he leaves. At the nuclear plant, Claudia once again repels into the cave containing stored nuclear waste. While there, she sees a dog. Claudia is struck by how similar the dog looks to Gretchen, the one she lost 33 years earlier. Although Claudia doesn't know it yet, Gretchen has joined the growing list of time travelers in Winden. Beginning to suspect there is something strange at work in the nuclear plant, Claudia again confronts her predecessor, Burned Doppler. She demands to know the true nature of an incident that occurred at the plant last summer. Burned lies and says it was a simple error in the volume control system. It produced only a small amount of waste that is safely hidden. Later, Alexander, now healed, comes to the plant to ask Regina's mother for work. Claudia makes no promises, but says they may need help in the future. Soon enough, that time comes. Claudia offers him work on the condition that it remain confidential. He agrees, and she asks him to weld shut the door to the area containing radioactive waste. This plants the seeds for Alexander's eventual promotion to plant director. In 2019, Katerina is looking for Ulrich, unaware that he's currently trapped in 1953. Charlotte doesn't know where he is and tells Katerina that she actually suspended him and expected him to go home. Katerina assumes he is with Hannah, but when confronted, Hannah spins lies to protect herself. She claims that Ulrich pressured her into the affair. She claims that Ulrich told Hannah he loves her and not Katerina. This understandably upsets Katerina, but diffuses her anger into sadness. Hannah decides to strike back at Ulrich for leaving her. As a physiotherapist, one of Hannah's clients is Alexander. After 33 years of holding on to the evidence, Hannah shows Alexander the bag containing his pistol and original passport. Hannah's offer is simple. I don't care how you do it, but I'd like you to destroy Ulrich or I'll expose you. As the director of the nuclear plant and a powerful figure in Winden, Hannah believes Alexander can do this. Alexander calls Torben Wooler, his confidant in the police force, and tells him to dig up dirt on Ulrich. He also tells Torben they'll soon be able to put the radioactive waste barrels back, which Torben helped to hide. The stranger pays a visit to the truck stop where the barrels are currently hidden and fills a vial with liquid from one of them. While Hannah seeks to destroy her lover, 
Hannah's son Jonas avoids his. Marta calls, but Jonas continually ignores her. He is shaken from his travels to 1986 and disturbed by the discovery that Marta is his aunt. Their relationship is wrong. Returning home in the rain, Jonas finds Marta waiting for him. She demands answers. She demands to know if their kiss at the play meant something. Jonas tells her that what happened between them was wrong. We're not a good match. She kisses Jonas. He apologizes and goes inside. While their relationship seemingly ends, another grows stronger. Magnus and Francisca have only gotten closer as they find comfort with each other while Winden falls apart. Meanwhile, Magnus and Jonah's friend, Bartosz, plays video games. He's interrupted when the grandmother he thought was dead shows up at his house. An older Claudia tells Bartosz that many of the stories his mother told him are true, but some are not. She leaves him with a photo of her and a young Regina so he can pass it on to his mother. Claudia tells him that she's made a lot of mistakes, and if she could turn back time, she'd do things differently. Claudia isn't the only one who wants to change the past. When Ulrich followed an older Helga into the Winden Cave, he ended up in 1953. However, Helga went to 1986. At his family's cabin, he spies on his younger self. The younger Helga has been working with Noah on the prototype time machine in the bunker, the one that burned Eric Obendorf's face and sent his corpse to 1953. Helga is beginning to lose his will to continue work on the machine, and the growing body count of innocent children is taking its toll. When Helga threatens to quit and asks Noah why God would want any of this, Noah assures Helga that there is no God. There is no plan. There is nothing but chaos. People are bad. Life is nothing but a spiral of pain. The world is doomed to be destroyed, but this machine is our ark, and I am Noah. He promises that with this device, they will be able to decide the world's fate, far removed from all the evil and from all pain. Besides Helga in 1986, Bartosz in 2019 has also been recruited to Noah's cause. They meet on a dark road. Bartosz tells Noah that everything he predicted has come true. Noah asks Bartosz if he thought about his offer, and Bartosz responds, yes. It is November 4th, 2019, the night Mikael vanished. Peter Doppler struggles with temptation to see the prostitute by the truck stop. He goes to the bunker by his family cabin to collect himself. While there, a portal opens and the corpse of a child falls out of it. Peter attempts CPR, but the child is dead. He quickly learns that he has found Ulrich's younger brother, Mads. The body has traveled from 1986 to his cabin in 2019. He calls the boy's father, Trant, to the cabin when an older, time-traveling Claudia appears. She instructs them to move the body into the woods, where it will be discovered, after which she will have more to tell them. At school, Jonas is confronted by Bartosz. Bartosz is furious that Jonas ditched him the night they were meant to meet Eric's drug dealer. And he feels betrayed that the very night Jonas skipped out on him, Jonas also kissed his girlfriend, Marta. Eventually, Marta breaks up the fight and Jonas takes off. Jonas goes to see his grandmother, Ines, and learns that she knew his father was truly Mikkel. He furiously asks why she didn't do anything to stop what would happen if she knew Mikkel would go back in time and become Michael, Jonas' father. Ines tells Jonas that she believes everything happens for a reason. What's past is past. Who knows what the future will bring? Jonas says he wants things to go back to normal. Ines smiles and leaves him with a pristine copy of his father's suicide note, the one he burned the other night. Still stranded in 1953, Ulrich has his mugshot taken. He is arrested under suspicion of murdering the two boys found at the construction site. While being dragged to a cell, Ulrich disturbs Egon by giving him a glimpse into the future. He asks, have you already started drinking or will you start after your wife leaves you? Besides Ulrich, there is another time traveler in 1953. The older Claudia visits H.G. Townhouse and provides him with blueprints for a device. When he asks what the device is, Claudia explains it's something that will set the course of time straight. He is unaware that he will be building a time machine. 33 years later, in 1986, the stranger returns to pick up his repaired time machine. 
Townhouse explains that, actually, he did not repair the machine. Instead, by looking at the stranger's old, worn-out machine, he was able to figure out how to complete the one he'd been working on, the one he'd started building when Claudia gave him the blueprints in 1953. It is a paradox. Townhouse was only able to complete the time machine by looking at it in its completed form once the stranger brought it from the future. The future influences the past. In fact, Townhouse does not even fully understand how the machine works. It is activated by holding Ulrich's cell phone near it. Townhouse doesn't know what a cell phone is, but surmised that it releases some form of communication that happens to affect the machine. The machine also has an opening, which is a mystery to Townhouse. However, the stranger shows this is where the cesium is placed, radioactive liquid he stole from the yellow barrels. Now understanding, Townhouse explains that the device generates a Higgs field. It increases the mass of the cesium, and an electromagnetic pulse causes it to implode into a black hole similar to the incident that occurred at the nuclear plant, creating the wormhole. The stranger leaves with the new device. It will grow old over the years, until it's brought back into the clockmaker's shop, where it will be exchanged for the new one in an endless time loop. In 2019, Charlotte listens to the last message Ulrich left her before he disappeared. The message which stated, The question isn't who abducted the children, but when. I was right, Helga Doppler. Not now, but in 1986. With Ulrich currently stranded in 1953, Charlotte is unable to call him back and instead investigates on her own. She visits her father-in-law Helga's nursing home to find that he is missing. The nurse explains that this is the longest he's been gone. The nurse and Charlotte are unaware that Helga is currently visiting 1986 with the help of the tunnels in Winden Cave. When asked if Ulrich has been back, the nurse says he hasn't, and strangely, Ulrich thought Helga had something to do with the missing children. Charlotte calls Peter to ask precisely when his father Helga was kidnapped as a child. He desperately wants to tell Charlotte something, but she doesn't allow him to say anything besides direct answers to her questions. He tells her Helga was kidnapped in 1953. Charlotte comments that this is exactly 66 years ago, an increment of 33. It's all connected, Charlotte says. She is familiar with the concept of 33-year cycles, as the clockmaker H.G. Townhouse is her grandfather. When Peter tells her they need to talk, she insists they can do so later and hangs up. With the year provided by Peter, Charlotte looks through old newspapers and finds an article about Helga's kidnapping. The article includes a mugshot of the suspect, and Charlotte immediately recognizes him as Ulrich. In 1986, Helga finds his older self visiting from 2019. The older Helga tells his younger self that Noah is lying to him and using him. Noah is evil. He begs the younger Helga not to make the same mistakes as him, but is unable to convince him. Rattled by the encounter, younger Helga seeks Noah's guidance. Noah tells Helga a story. When Noah was a little boy, a stranger stayed with his family. The stranger looked like he'd been in a war and had great sadness in his eyes. He sometimes spoke in his sleep, rarely making sense, except for one night when he said, Nothing is in vain, not a single breath, not a single step, not a single word, not pain. Years later, Noah understood this to mean that pain makes us stronger and makes us who we are. He tells Helga that his pain made him who he is, but no longer has power over him. This works to reignite Helga's passion for the cause. He asks Noah who is next. After checking his log, Noah says, Jonas Conwald. Jonas, after talking to his grandmother, decides he will return to 1986. This time, rather than leave things be, he will rescue Mikkel and change the timeline. Before leaving, Jonas hugs his mother and tells her everything will be okay. He has seemingly accepted that his actions will erase himself from existence. In 1986 Winden, Jonas runs into a young Charlotte Doppler. She is sketching pictures of dead birds killed by the electromagnetic effects of the time tunnel. After confirming with Charlotte that the date is November 12, 1986, she asks Jonas what he's doing there. He bluntly says that he is bringing someone back to life. He then heads back to the hospital and quickly locates Mikkel. He sees his father asleep, 
being read to by Noah. Jonas asks who he is, but Noah simply replies by shushing him. Before Jonas can say anything else, Helga grabs him and knocks him unconscious. When Jonas wakes up, he is in a room with a bunk bed, childish wallpaper, and the prototype of a time machine. He is in the last room Eric Obendorf ever saw. A slot opens and the stranger is there. He tells Jonas not to be afraid. Why did you lock me in here? Jonas asks. The stranger explains that it wasn't him, it was Noah. The stranger tells Jonas that he is a guinea pig for the time machine. The passage in the cave is directly under the bunker. If opened, the energy flows through the room, but it is not powerful enough. The machine increases it. According to the stranger, it doesn't quite work yet. Jonas pleads with the stranger to let him out. When he refuses, Jonah asks who he is, and finally, the truth is revealed. The stranger, the time traveler standing before Jonas, is Jonas Conwald. The older Jonas tells his younger self that although we think we are free, we are not. We are destined to follow the same path over and over. The younger Jonas tells him, that's crazy. He can decide to let him go right now. No, he cannot. The older Jonas explains, if he did, it would change his past and change who he is right now, preventing him from destroying the wormhole and setting things back to normal. He asks younger Jonas why he kissed Marta and says, we are not free in what we do because we're not free in what we want. Young Jonas begs him to stop. The older Jonas apologizes and leaves. It is cruel, but he believes it is necessary to fix things. Elsewhere in 1986, the older Helga has adjusted his plan after failing to convince younger Helga to leave Noah's cause. The older Helga crashes into a car driven by his younger self. 75-year-old Helga dies and fails again. Younger Helga lives to carry out Noah's lethal experiments. In 2019, Noah tells Bartosz that everything is about to begin. He explains that the older Jonas will shortly attempt to close the hole under Winden. However, Jonas has been lied to by an older Claudia. His actions will close the hole, but they will also cause it to be opened in the first place. A paradox. Noah explains that two groups are currently fighting to control time travel, light and shadow. He and Bartosz belong to light, even if what they do is often of a dark nature. As long as they are in this time loop, every move must be repeated exactly. He tells Bartosz that his grandmother Claudia is of the shadow and is not to be trusted. Finally, he hands Bartosz a familiar notebook, chronicling future events, and tells him that, in time, they will free humanity from its pain. Older Jonas crawls into the tunnel under Winden Cave. He activates the machine and sees a familiar apparition, his father covered in blood. The electromagnetic effects of the machine can be witnessed in 1953, 1986, and 2019. In 1953, a bloodied Helga is trapped in a bunker. In 1986, Jonas is trapped in the same bunker. A wormhole appears between them. As they reach out to it, each of them are transported to different times. Helga finds himself in 1986. Jonas arrives in 2052, where the bunker now contains photographs of important Winden residents and strings showing their connections to one another. There are also weapons. Older Claudia has been in this cabin. Jonas steps outside into a world ravaged by the apocalypse. He is found by a group armed with weapons. One of them welcomes him to the future before knocking him unconscious. By the way, before we continue, just a quick reminder if you're enjoying this video to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video. Seven months pass. On June 21st, 1921, a young Noah and another man dig the tunnels that will one day transport Jonas and others through time. The man comments that it is strange for the end and beginning to be the same. In reply, Noah simply states, Sic mundus creatus est. Thus the world was created. The man refocuses to the task at hand, chanting Sic mundus creatus est, while continuing to dig. Outside the cave, they discuss a prophecy handed down by someone named Adam. In six days, paradise begins, and hell on earth will end, Noah says. The other man is skeptical. 
Noah says that Adam was right. The man has lost faith. The man says that he has waited for this moment, and it's interesting that it's Noah. Before Noah executes him, the man says that he hopes the day will come when Noah doesn't believe everything Adam tells him. He tells Noah to ask Adam why he took him in, and why he called him Noah. Then Noah kills the man. Later, Young Noah meets with his older self and asks these exact questions. The older Noah tells him that he will understand when the time is right. Having provided guidance to his younger self, it is time for Noah to receive guidance of his own. He meets with Adam, his leader. Adam reminds Noah that the apocalypse must happen and that with so little time left, Noah must find the missing pages. It is June 21st, 2020, six days before the apocalypse. A federal task force has been formed to investigate the unsolved missing children cases from months earlier. This task force will be led by an agent named Clausen. He announces to the town a plan to re-interview everyone involved in the case. Later, he sits with Charlotte so they can get to work. Wooler brings them the case files and they begin planning their investigation. Meanwhile, Ehrlich's wife Katerina, neglecting her children, has been doing her own investigation. She's been exploring the Winden Cave, though is yet to find anything useful. At Katerina's home, her daughter Marta is looking for her in Mikkel's room, but instead finds only Ulrich's case files. Going through them, she sees a photo of the metal door in the cave. When her brother Magnus arrives, she shows him the photo and says she thinks this is what their mother is looking for. Regina Tiedemann meets with her doctor as the cancer progresses. Her son Bartosz leaves to meet with Marta. Without having to say much, Bartosz knows that Marta is breaking up with him. He asks if it's because of Jonas, but Marta explains that Jonas has nothing to do with it. Bartosz and Marta hardly ever see each other, and Bartosz has changed. She feels like he's hiding something. He admits that he is hiding something, but can't tell her what it is. He can't tell her about his involvement with Noah. Alexander Tiedemann gives a speech to his workers at the nuclear plant to thank them for their loyalty. In one week, the plant will be decommissioned. This is the date upon which the apocalypse will occur. Later that day, Torben returns the yellow barrels to the plant, where Alexander watches as they are buried in concrete. At H.G. Townhouse's old store, Peter tells his daughter Elizabeth that although Townhouse died years ago, they decided to keep the store. Charlotte doesn't know her parents, as they died young. So the shop is all that remains of her family. H.G. Townhouse was her grandfather. In the store, Elizabeth finds an old photo. In it, she spots Noah, the man who gave her a pocket watch months earlier. Peter meets Charlotte at the bunker to show her the photo. On the back, it says January 8, 1921, Sic Mundus Creatus Est. At the Conwald household, Hannah sits at the table with a box containing Alexander's passport and gun from 33 years earlier. One year ago, Hannah's husband hanged himself. Five months later, her son Jonas and her lover Ulrich disappeared. Hannah picks up the gun and holds it to her head. Before Hannah joins her husband, she is interrupted by a stranger letting himself into her home. Jonas has returned to her as an older man. He tells her things only Jonas could know. He even reminds her of a time he bumped into her younger self in 1986. He is able to convince her that he is truly her son. She wants to know where her Jonas is. He explains that although he attempted to destroy the wormhole, he only closed it, meaning young Jonas is trapped in 2053. The older Jonas is here now to put an end to all this once and for all. Later that night, Hannah watches her son sleep. She notices the many scars on his back. In 2053, Jonas wakes up in a post-apocalyptic Winden. He has been living in his abandoned family home. He heads to the bunker that originally transported him to this time and listens to a recording. My name is Claudia Tiedemann. I'm one of the few survivors of the apocalypse on June 27, 2020. Almost three months have passed since the catastrophe. It's unclear what exactly caused the event in Winden, but the God Particle, if we can stabilize it, it might provide a way back, back to the past. Maybe we can save them, all of them. Jonas visits a cemetery and places a family photo by his father's gravestone, then visits Marta. Jonas walks through the woods with bodies hanging from trees and joins a crowd watching an execution take place. The men are being executed for going beyond the wall, into the dead zone and seeing something they were not meant to see. You're hiding God. You mustn't hide God. He's not yours alone. 
The woman in charge of the group orders them to hang. This woman is an older Elizabeth Doppler, Charlotte and Peter Doppler's daughter. With the help of her translator, Silja, Elizabeth reminds her followers that passage into the dead zone is punishable by death. She concludes by saying, Sic mundus creatus est, which her followers repeat in unison. Everyone leaves while Jonas stays behind. Elizabeth asks Jonas where he's been. When he doesn't reply, Elizabeth tells Jonas that there is nothing out there. Their only hope is the passage, she assures him. The prophecy will come true, and the passage will open and lead us to paradise. Jonas grows angry and tells her that all his friends and family die in six days in his time. He doesn't need her paradise. He wants to go home. He asks, what is beyond the wall? What did the men see which they had to be executed for? Elizabeth does not answer. Despite Elizabeth's warning, Jonas crosses the wall into the dead zone. He makes his way to the destroyed nuclear plant and discovers a strange glowing orb. In 2020, Charlotte is researching the photo her daughter discovered. Searching online, she translates Sic Mundus Creatus Est to Thus the World Was Created. She's interrupted when Clausen reminds her it's time to interview the Tiedemanns. Clausen is interested in the Tiedemanns as the children's disappearances seem to cluster around the nuclear plant. He also finds it odd that Alexander took his wife Regina's last name when they married. At the Tiedemanns, Clausen asks Regina several questions, but is particularly interested in her husband's last name. Why did he take hers rather than Regina take his as is traditional? Regina does not answer, but has something else she wants to share. Around the time the children went missing, a strange man stayed in Regina's hotel. After the man disappeared, she took the belongings he left behind. She shares them with Charlotte and Clausen. As Charlotte goes through the older Jonas Conwald's things, she discovers a copy of a page from her grandfather's book, A Journey Through Time. She makes up an excuse and leaves the interview. Meanwhile, older Jonas, no longer looking to keep secrets, shows Hannah the time machine. He explains that it can travel 33 years forward or backwards. He'd like to take Hannah to 1987, where she can see Mikkel herself, and see that her husband was, in fact, an accidental time traveler. He takes Hannah into the caves. It is safer to travel from there, he says. Then, in 1987, Hannah is given a glimpse of her husband, Mikkel. At the nuclear plant, Claudia is alerted by her secretary that a woman arrived looking for her dog. Claudia doesn't realize that the dog is, in fact, Gretchen, the very dog she lost in 1953. The woman, waiting in her office, reveals herself to be an older Claudia from the future. Older Claudia explains that in 1953, she was waiting in the cave to grab Gretchen and brought the pup to 1986, where a middle-aged Claudia found her. Older Claudia is there to ensure that things happen as they always have in this time cycle. At the same time, Claudia's father Egon visits Helga in the hospital, who is recovering from his car accident. Egon has been thinking about the Mads Nielsen case. He never got around to asking Helga, why not Forest Road? Cryptically, Helga tells Egon that he said he can change everything. He can change the past and the future. When Egon asks who, Helga says the man with the stone. But no one can change it, no one. Not even the white devil. Egon then visits an institution. The man they arrested in 1953 for Helga's kidnapping has been kept there for 34 years. The older, broken Ulrich greets Egon and says, My only aim is to take many lives. The more, the better I feel. Quoting disturbing lyrics from a song Egon heard from a teenage Ulrich only months earlier. Ulrich says that he knows when Egon will die because he read it in the papers. Disturbed by the encounter, Egon leaves. Older Claudia and her younger self go to the caves where the plant's barrels are stored. Older Claudia shows her the time machine. She explains that it allows for travel backward or forward 33 years. She says it will take exactly 33 years until the cycle is complete again. You will stand here where I am standing, and you will accept your part in all of this and every sacrifice it requires. In five days, everything starts over. You must stop Adam. Her younger self is confused, but Claudia assures that she'll understand soon. Until then, 
everything will happen the way it always has. She also adds that if everything works out, her daughter Regina will get to live, but at the moment their time together is short. Older Claudia hands her younger self some papers, then activates the machine and disappears. These papers contain instructions guiding Claudia to dig a hole in her front yard, where she will find the time machine buried by older Claudia in 1954. In 2053, Jonas listens to more of Claudia's recordings to learn that the glowing orb represents the God Particle. If stabilized, it could allow for time travel. Jonas manages to stabilize the particle for just a moment before it again destabilizes. To make it last, Jonas will need more gas for the generators. He sets a trap so that music blasts at full volume from a building. This draws the attention of some of Elizabeth's followers in a truck. While they are distracted, Jonas steals some of their gasoline. However, as he returns to the dead zone, Elizabeth and Silja capture him. Before hanging, Jonas asks Elizabeth why she is lying to everyone. That earns him a gunshot to the leg. Then he tells the crowd, In five days, in my time, everybody is going to die. I have to stop that. There is no prophecy. The passage will never open. Your paradise does not exist. But behind the walls there he is cut off. As Elizabeth kicks the board out from under him, Jonas hangs from the neck. Then Elizabeth shoots the rope to free him. That night, Soja asks Jonas why Elizabeth spared his life. She asks who he really is. When Jonas doesn't answer, she tells him to show her what really is in the dead zone. So he takes her to the nuclear plant and shows her the God Particle. He explains that it's a portal and his only way back home. Using the gasoline he obtained, he's able to power the generators, stabilize the particle, and walk through it. In the time since Jonas began his travels through time, Noah and his group have managed to get the time travel chair working more reliably. In 1987, Noah has Helga in the chair. He reminds him that he was chosen by God. He tells Helga that time is always with him. He carries it, and it carries him. Then Noah says, Tick tock, which Helga repeats. This will become a nervous mantra Helga repeats throughout his life, into old age. In 1954, Egon's wife Doris and Ulrich's grandmother Agnes are physically intimate. Egon is unaware of this, but does notice something is wrong in his marriage. He seeks advice from Daniel Conwald, police chief, father to Ines and Jana. He advises that Egon should seek satisfaction from someone other than his wife. Their conversation is interrupted by the news that Helga Doppler has returned. However, when Egon checks in on him, he finds that a silent Helga has not spoken a word since his return. In the Doppler bunker, Agnes meets with older Claudia. She lets Claudia know that Helga and Noah returned to 1954 today. She also tells Claudia that she is no longer afraid of Noah. Claudia replies with a reminder that Noah and Agnes are brother and sister. She goes on to say that Sick Mundus, Noah's group led by Adam, is preparing for the next cycle in four days. Noah is a blind fool that has caused so much suffering, but it will soon end. Then she hands Agnes a newspaper article. Agnes is disturbed by what she sees in the article. Claudia comforts her, saying that her mother Doris will make Agnes very happy. She thanks Agnes for everything, and they hug goodbye. After this meeting, Agnes has another strange encounter, this time with her brother Noah. She's had a falling out with Sigmundus, betraying Adam to side with Claudia. However, she wants back in. In return, she can tell Noah where the missing pages are, the ones Adam pressed Noah to find. Agnes tells Noah that the older Claudia is carrying them. She then shows Noah the newspaper article, giving him a time and place where he can find Claudia. While Agnes meets with her brother, Claudia sees her father. Claudia's mismatched eye colors remind Egon of his daughter. The mysterious older woman in his office apologizes to him, but Egon doesn't know what for. She tells him, you're much too good a person. At home, Egon's daughter, still a young girl, tells him the same. He is unaware that the woman in his office was his daughter after aging several decades. In the woods, child Claudia asks Trant, Ulrich's father, about his life before Winden. 
He mentions that he grew up in a home and that his mother Agnes has a brother. He thinks the two of them hated each other. In 1987, heeding her older self's warning that their time is limited, Claudia asks her daughter if she'd like to skip school and spend some time together. Regina passes. Instead, Claudia heads to the hospital to see Helga and ask about the book he gave her, A Journey Through Time. Why did he give it to her? Helga doesn't quite answer and instead says that he thinks Claudia is one of the few who might understand him. He goes on to rant about Noah. There is a battle between good and evil. Travelers can undo everything that happens. If we succeed, none of it will happen. Helga tells Claudia that Noah said all this and warns her never to trust him. From Helga, Claudia heads over to H.G. Townhouse's shop to speak with the author himself. He explains that the book represents a bootstrapped paradox, meaning it is a past event caused by a future event in an endless cycle with no true origin. Years ago, an older Claudia visited Townhouse and gave him a copy of the book he had not yet written. He plagiarizes from his future self to write the book, which one day Claudia will hand him. The older Claudia also told Townhouse that this day will come. Her younger self will visit. Townhouse is meant to explain it to this younger Claudia how the time machine works, something he can only do because it was explained to him a year earlier by Jonas. As Claudia discusses time travel, her father Egon does the same. He's gone to the institution to see a man he does not yet know is Ulrich. Egon is dying of cancer. In their previous encounter, the man in the institution somehow seemed to predict this. Egon asks him how he knew. Ulrich finally admits that his name is Ulrich Nielsen, and he tells Egon that he comes from the future. In 1954, Egon has a much less fruitful conversation with a younger Ulrich. Since Helga returned home safely, it is now assumed Ulrich must have had an accomplice. Who else could have taken care of the boy until now? However, this Ulrich is heavily medicated and barely able to speak. So Egon learns nothing of this supposed accomplice. In 1987, armed with the name Ulrich Nielsen, Egon begins putting the pieces together. The mystery boy that appeared a few months earlier claimed an Ulrich Nielsen was his father. At the time, Egon thought it a prank, as Ulrich, in 1987, is just a teenager. However, as Egon is learning, Ulrich is also an old man trapped in an institution. Following the trail, Egon visits Ines Conwald's home in the hopes of speaking with her adopted son, Michael who is truly Mikkel, the boy who claimed Ulrich Nielsen is his father. He is asleep now, but Ines reluctantly agrees Egon can speak to him tomorrow. On the way out, Egon notices sleeping pills, which Ines claims are for her. One of their side effects is amnesia. Perhaps they would explain why a young boy is asleep so early in the day. Perhaps they would also help a boy forget that he is from the future and live a normal life. Egon borrows a photo of the boy and leaves. Returning to the institution, Egon tells Ulrich that a boy appeared in Winden a few months earlier. He shows a picture of the boy. Learning that his son has appeared in the same time period as him, Ulrich loses it. He attacks Egon and accuses him of keeping this information secret. After learning to use the machine, Claudia returns to the nuclear plant where her father Egon is waiting to see her. She is furious at him for showing up unannounced, but the tone of the conversation shifts when Egon announces he has cancer. He is dying, the same way Claudia's daughter Regina is dying in 2020. Claudia will see this firsthand when, after this meeting, she uses the device for the first time and sees her ill daughter in the future. In 1954, old Claudia is found by Noah. She knows he will kill her, but is unintimidated. Her death is one part of a game Noah still does not know how to play. She tells him he is a pawn for Adam. The paradise he's promised is a lie. Noah's freedom is an illusion. Her words give Noah pause before he shoots and kills her. He finds the missing pages on her and looks through them. He is disturbed by what he reads. Charlotte Doppler is his daughter. Returning to 1921, Noah lies to Adam and claims Claudia did not have the missing pages on her. Adam tells Noah she got exactly what she deserved. In the end, we all get what we deserve. Agnes looks at the newspaper article that Claudia gave her. Its headline reads, 
unidentified woman's body found in woods. Jonas, after stepping through the God particle in 2053, finds himself in a field in 1921. Two men discover him, and seeing his wounds, assume he is a returned prisoner of war. They take him to an inn run by Erna, a woman who tends to take in strays like him. At the inn, Jonas meets a young Agnes, his great-great-grandmother. She lives there along with her brother Noah. After sleeping for 24 hours, Jonas wakes up to see a young Noah who says, I picture you differently. He knew he'd be meeting this young Jonas one day. After Noah leaves the room, Jonas notices an image of the emerald tablet containing the phrase, Sic mundus creatus est, over a triketra, the same one that can be found on the time travel doors in Winden Cave. It's all connected. Jonas quickly sets off for the cave, hoping to return to his time and hopefully save his loved ones from the impending apocalypse. However, crawling through the metal doors, all he finds is a dead end. There is no wormhole yet. Dejected, Jonas leaves the cave and finds young Noah eating an apple. He informs Jonas it'll be another 32 years before the hole in time is opened. Noah then tells Jonas that Sigmundus, the travelers, want to see him. If Jonas wants to return home, seeing them is the only way. In 2020, older Jonas discovers the box on Hannah's kitchen table, the one containing Alexander's gun and passport. After some questioning, Hannah reveals that the box contains blackmail material, but shares no further detail. While they talk, Charlotte arrives. Hannah calls her over without Jonas's knowledge. Hannah quickly reveals to Charlotte that the man in her kitchen is an older Jonas. Having already been exposed to the time travel conspiracy, Charlotte accepts this. Charlotte shows Jonas the photograph her daughter discovered and asks if he knows a particular man she points at. He does. It is Noah. He describes the group as travelers that call themselves Sigmundus. Then, Charlotte takes Hannah and Jonas to the bunker where they meet Peter. The wall is covered with notes and drawings related to the game of time travel chess being played in Winden. Hannah sees Ulrich's mugshot from 1953. Peter explains that he and Trant were visited by an older Claudia that explained everything to them. He shares with Jonas the notebook chronicling the children's disappearances and other events, a notebook that is currently missing pages, now in Noah's possession. Hannah is shocked that Charlotte and Peter knew all this about Mikkel and Ulrich. She insists they have to tell Katerina. Charlotte agrees and says she'll be the one to tell her. Charlotte picks up Katerina to take her to the bunker. It's easier to show her than explain, Charlotte says, but Katerina is insistent. Finally, Charlotte admits that they found Katerina's husband and son. They're not dead, but they are not here. You have to see it with your own eyes, Charlotte tells her. At the bunker, they tell Katerina everything. Mikkel traveled through time to become Michael. Ulrich was stranded in the 50s. She is skeptical, but the others insist it is true. When the older Jonas tells her it's true and that he is her grandson, Katerina hits a breaking point and laughs. Hannah tells Katerina that she went back in time herself and saw Mikkel with her own eyes. Katerina tells them they've all lost it and leaves. She goes to the school where she is principal and checks old files to find the boy named Michael Conwald, the boy who attended school there 33 years earlier. She finds a photograph and sees her son who disappeared months earlier. Katerina accepts the truth. In the bunker, Peter asks what's next, but Jonas says it doesn't matter. Everything will happen as it always has. So Peter responds, why are you here? Jonas explains that Adam, the head of Sigmundus, said there is a loophole. He continues to say that Adam wants the final cycle to begin in three days. Jonas is here to stop him, something the older Claudia tried to do herself. But in the end, she became exactly what she was fighting against. Then, Jonas leaves. At the Nielsen house, Marta and her brother Magnus wonder what to do about their mother, who seems to have gone off the deep end. They are interrupted when Charlotte's daughters, Francisca and Elizabeth, arrive. Magnus and Francisca, now a couple, have been fighting, but begin to reconcile. The children all discuss how weird everyone has been acting. So they decide to head to the cave and determine for themselves what is going on. In the caves, the Doppler and Nielsen children discuss Jonas. 
Marta still dreams of him. It feels so real, she wonders if he's still alive. Francisco wonders if Jonas knew something he shouldn't, and that's why he disappeared. In the cave, they hear someone else there, and find it is their friend Bartosz, the boy Marta broke up with days earlier. They furiously ask him what he is doing there. When he refuses to answer, they become violent. They inspect his time machine and ask what it is. He remains silent. Failing to garner any information, they tie him up in the cave, take the machine, and abandon the boy who was once their friend. Claudia, currently visiting from 1987, stops at the power plant. She asks if Claudia Tiedemann is there, but is told that the only Tiedemann around is Alexander. She is confused. Inside, Alexander, the director of the plant, is being questioned by Clausen. He asks a few questions until he gets to the one that is of particular interest to him. Why did Alexander take his wife's last name? Alexander claims it was to keep the Tiedemann name alive. Regina has no siblings, so this was the only way. Clausen asks for Alexander's original last name, and he reveals it to be Cooler. Having no luck at the plant, Claudia visits the local library. Although confused by the modern technology, she learns to navigate it well enough. From her readings, she learns of the prior 33 years events. It's reported that Claudia disappeared without a trace years earlier. She learns of the marriage between her daughter Regina and a man named Alexander. She also learns that her father will be found dead at his home on June 26, 1987. Today is June 24th. Clausen and Torben chat before interviewing Hannah. Torben asks Clausen if he volunteered for the task force, and Clausen answers, oh yes. He has a very specific reason for taking the position, which will soon be revealed. As they continue to drive, Clausen lists the many strange occurrences in Winden and asks Torben for his take. He simply says he doesn't know. Clausen then asks Torben what happened to his eye. Okay. But you can't tell anyone, Torben says. Before he can divulge the secret, they have to swerve the car to avoid crashing into an oblivious, time-traveling Claudia. She is on her way to the cave so she can return to 1987. In 1921, Noah brings young Jonas to see Adam. The older Noah escorts him underground and through a doorway marked Sic Mundus Creatus Est. Inside, Jonas meets the badly disfigured Adam, who explains that time travel takes its toll. The human body is not meant to experience it continually. Jonas exclaims that he wants all this to end, and Adam promises it will soon. Then Jonas asks Adam who he is. Adam opens his collar to reveal a neck scar. Jonas learns that the man in front of him, Adam, is his future self, the thing he will become in 66 years. In 2053, Silja has just witnessed Jonas disappear into the God Particle. Before she can return to camp, Elizabeth discovers her. She is in the dead zone, an offense punishable by death. Elizabeth demands to know why Silja is here. Instead of answering, Silja demands to know what the glowing orb in the other room is. Elizabeth answers, they say it is a piece of God, but it's really a piece of the devil. The morning after leaving Bartosz in Winden Cave, Marta and Magnus rush to revisit him and see if he'll talk. On the way out of the house, their mother Katerina tries to talk with them. She wants to show them the photograph of Mikkel from decades earlier. She wants to tell them the truths she's learned. However, Marta is furious that after neglecting them for so long, she suddenly thinks they'll drop everything to indulge her. Marta storms out of the house with Magnus. Marta, Magnus, Francisca, and Elizabeth return to the cave in the cave, they continue interrogating Bartosz. He says that he is not allowed to tell them anything, and even if he did, they wouldn't believe him. They threaten to leave him for dead, and Bartosz finally admits the device is a time machine. They release him to show how it works. He activates the device, and the five of them are engulfed in the black orb. They are transported to 1987. As they leave the cave, Bartosz tells his friends about how he was convinced all this was real when Noah predicted future events, Jonas and Marta kissing, or Bartosz's mother getting cancer, for example. Noah also told him there is a war over time. His grandmother is a part of it, and so is Jonas. Once they reach the bus stop, they see enough evidence to realize Bartosz is telling the truth. They are, in fact, in 1987. Armed with the knowledge of time travel and Bartosz's device, 
they returned to 2019. Still in 1987, Ulrich looks at a picture of his son, then leaps to action and escapes the institution. He finds Mikkel, and after 33 years, is reunited with his son. Mikkel doesn't recognize him at first, but notes that he seems familiar. Ulrich turns a cup upside down and says, The question isn't how, but when. These are the last words Mikkel said to Ulrich the morning before he disappeared. Mikkel, the boy who never knew where he belonged, is given a taste of familiar for the first time in nearly a year. Mikkel and Ulrich tearfully embrace. At the hospital, Ines hears someone has escaped the loony bin. She rushes home to make sure her adopted son is safe, but finds he is missing. The two cups left on the table tell her someone else was there. She calls Egon, who quickly realizes it must be the older Ulrich that kidnapped Mikkel. Ulrich and Mikkel run for the caves to return home, but are stopped by Egon and his reinforcements. Father and son are separated again. Ulrich swears he'll bring Mikkel home and swears that the next time he sees Egon, he will kill him. As he's driven back to the institution, Ulrich sees a group of time travelers from 2020, including his children, Marta and Magnus. He begs the driver to stop, but of course, they do not. With her son safely back at home, Ines makes him a warm beverage mixed with sleeping pills to help him forget. It is now the day before Egon Tiedemann is to die. Claudia pays him a visit. She insists that Egon move in with her and Regina. Her next stop is Burned Doppler's home. She doesn't know the details of last summer's incident at the plant, but knows enough to say it was not a reaction in the volume control system. Cornered, Burned finally gives her the files that reveal the truth. She quickly sees the results that should be impossible. They've discovered the God Particle. They have to go public. Burned tells her to do what she will with the data, but to leave his name out of it. He does not want the plant's legacy to be affected. At the plant, Claudia hands some of the cesium from the waste barrels to a scientist and asks him confidentially to analyze it. In 2020, Katerina visits Hannah and demands to know how she was able to see Mikkel. Hannah reveals that older Jonas has a time machine. After Katerina calls Hannah a parasite, for sleeping with Katerina's husband and son, they are interrupted by Clausen's arrival. He shows both of them a sketch of older Jonas and asks if they know him. Both say no. Time machine in hand, the older Jonas visits Marta's home. He leaves a necklace of St. Christopher on her pillow. He then meets with Charlotte in the bunker to answer her questions. Who is Noah? He is Adam's puppet. He killed Mads, Eric, and Yasin. Charlotte suspects that all this somehow relates to her. Do you know who my parents are? She asks. No, but I know your grandfather, Jonas replies. Charlotte explains that Townhouse raised her, but was not her biological grandfather. She asks if Townhouse was one of the travelers, but Jonas says that no, he's just a pawn like most of us. He, like Jonas and Peter, was used by Claudia. Charlotte races back to the clockmaker's store and inspects the time machine blueprints. While there, she is visited by Noah. Charlotte knows who he is and quickly says, you killed the children. Noah explains that he can't change what she thinks of him, but hopefully one day she'll see that these awful events will be erased. The things that he's done, he'll no longer have done. Noah shows her a photograph of him holding Charlotte, his daughter, as a baby. Charlotte learns she is, for the first time, meeting her biological father, Noah. Noah says that her mother took this picture, and he promised her that he'd bring their daughter back. He didn't know that his daughter was here this whole time, but Adam did. Noah tells Charlotte that having read the missing pages of the notebook, he knows Adam is expecting the apocalypse to happen again. Noah now knows what he must do. He has to end Adam so that everyone will live, not just those in the bunker. Before Noah leaves, Charlotte tearfully asks who her mother is. Cryptically, he answers, she loved you very much. She still does. Older Jonas returns home to Hannah. He sees a picture of Mikkel on the table and asks if he ever meant anything to Hannah. If she could choose between him and Ulrich now, who would she choose? 
Jonas tells Hannah that with everything going on, he thought she was the one person he could trust. Hannah admits she ruined everything and tries to stop Jonas from leaving her. He coldly tells her that she needs no one, only herself. In another part of town, Marta returns home from her travels in the past and finds Jonas's St. Christopher necklace on her pillow, a sign that he has returned. In 1921, Jonas demands to know why he is there. Adam speaks in platitudes without giving him direct answers. Finally, Jonas exclaims that there must be a way to change it all so things happen differently. A loophole, Adam suggests. It took him 66 years, but he claims to have found one. Jonas tells Adam that in the future, there is a prophecy that Sigmundus will lead the world into paradise. Is this a religion, Jonas asks. Adam insists it is the opposite and says they had decided to wage war on time, on God. We're creating a new world without time, without God. He insists that God is not a thinking entity, but is time itself, a physical law. God is time and time is not merciful. Our fates are simply a concatenation of cause and effect, he says. Adam ruminates on how the world is a gigantic knot that traps us all. Jonas asks why he's doing any of this if the knot can't be changed. Adam remembers sitting in Jonas's seat, asking the same question and thinking he can't understand how he'd ever become the man sitting in front of him. 66 years later, he understands. Some moments change us forever. Some pain you never forget. Adam says there is a way. The chair in the bunker, the briefcase time machine, the orb in the future are all advancements on a time machine, but they are not the end of the chain. Adam has a machine that is more advanced, one that is not limited to fixed 33-year increments, meaning Jonas can travel to the day Mikkel committed suicide and stop the chain of events that followed. He can stop Mikkel from disappearing as a child. Adam shows him the machine. It looks like the one in the future, but is not the same, Adam says. Over the years, people have called it many things, such as ether, dark matter, or the Higgs field. Jonas asks how it came to be. Adam explains that the one in the future came from the impending disaster that causes the apocalypse. This one is a technological achievement brought to you by Sick Mundus. Adam stabilizes the particle, and Jonas walks through the portal to June 20th, 2019, the day before Mikkel took his own life. He will stop this from happening, stop Mikkel from traveling in time, and stop himself from ever existing. The knot will be destroyed. Marta and the others will live. June 21st, 2019, the day before Mikkel's suicide. A younger Jonas has breakfast with his mother and father. Afterwards, he's planning to meet his friends at the lake. Hannah reminds Michael that Ulrich and Katerina Nielsen are having a party that night. She confirms again that Michael does not want to attend. Michael is uneasy, knowing he's quickly approaching the beginning of the loop in time that sent him to 1986 and turned him from Mikkel to Michael. On a bright, sunny day, Jonas and his friends head to the lake while future Jonas arrives from Adam's lair. At the Nielsen's, Mikkel is ill with rubella. At the Doppler's, Charlotte is not speaking with her husband, Peter, after learning of his recent infidelities. She'll be going to the Nielsen's party alone that night. At the lake, Jonas and Marta grow closer. While talking, they discover something buried in the sand, a medal of St. Christopher, the patron saint of travelers. In about a year, Marta will find this same medal on her pillow, left for her by an older Jonas. As they continue to lounge, Marta tells Jonas that sometimes she feels like she can feel what is about to happen. Before they can kiss, Marta's brother Magnus spoils the mood. Then Jonas remembers he has to leave to see his grandma. Moments later, time-traveling Jonas appears. He hides the scar on his neck and approaches Marta. Jonas is different, and Marta can tell. He doesn't reveal his identity, but tells Marta he thinks they're a perfect match and never to think anything else. They kiss, and Jonas leaves after giving her one last look. At the Nielsen's party, the residents of Winden are having a great time, though some of the lies are already beginning. 
Where is Peter? Hannah asks. Charlotte lies and says he's ill with a summer cold. Ulrich and Katerina are happy together, and Hannah watches with jealousy. They've not yet begun their affair. Future Jonas returns to his home where his father, Michael, awaits. Jonas embraces his father and tells him he knows. What do you know? Michael asks. Jonas raises a fist and speaks the same greeting Mikkel said to him the night he disappeared. Ultimate fist bump? Realization dawns on Mikkel. Jonas knows the truth. Mikkel asks for forgiveness. The two sit down and Jonas tells his story. He begs Mikkel not to hang himself. Jonas asks if he already wrote the letter, but Mikkel is confused. What letter? he asks. Jonas hands over the letter, which has not yet been written, and explains he is here to stop the endless loop that began with Mikkel's suicide. With their truths spoken, they're able to speak openly. Jonas asks Mikkel what happened the night he disappeared. How did Mikkel end up at the cave in 1986? He surprises Jonas by saying that after they were separated, Mikkel was guided by another Jonas. The other Jonas brought Mikkel to the cave and through the tunnel. Jonas told Mikkel they'd have to spend the night in the cave, but when he awoke, Jonas was gone. Over the years, Mikkel's memory of the event faded into a dream. But today, it's all coming back to him. He wonders aloud if maybe Jonas didn't come to stop him, but to show him what he must do. Maybe Mikkel needs to die, so the events carry on as they originally did. So Jonas will be born. Maybe Jonas's role is much greater than he thinks. These are words Jonas has heard before. Mikkel resolves to write the letter and hang himself. God has a plan, he reassures Jonas. Just then, the older Claudia appears. Jonas doesn't know her, so she introduces herself as opposition to Adam. Adam is the darkness. Claudia follows the light. She tells Jonas that Adam lied. He did not intend for Jonas to stop anything, but, as Mikkel suggested, ensure everything happens as it always has. Adam doesn't want to fix things. He wants to destroy them. Claudia echoes Mikkel and says, Jonas plays a larger role than he thinks. Only Jonas can put an end to all this. Jonas offers that if he erases his own existence, Adam loses the war. But Claudia tells him she's seen a world without Jonas, and it isn't what you would expect. Jonas and Mikkel have to make sacrifices for the greater cause of saving their loved ones. Events must occur as they did before. At the Nielsen's party, Katerina tends to an ill Mikkel. Upstairs, Jonas and Marta grow closer. She gives him the Medal of St. Christopher, which she's turned into a necklace. They kiss. Outside in the rain, Ulrich and Hannah sit. He asks if this is the apocalypse, a line he said to her 33 years earlier during a similar rainstorm. As the rain picks up, they find themselves closer. They kiss, and the affair begins. Upstairs, Jonas and Marta make love. This is the thing that happened between them over the summer. At his childhood home, a tearful Jonas leaves Mikkel and follows Claudia to his destiny. In his studio, Mikkel sits down to write a letter. A Jonas, 66 years older and badly disfigured from years of time travel, holds the necklace of St. Christopher in the palm of his hand. In 1954, the older Claudia's body is examined as Egon observes. He recognizes her as the woman that visited the station the day Helga returned. The police chief tells him to show her picture to Helga and see if he recognizes her. Perhaps she was the madman's accomplice. Egon shows Helga the photo of Claudia. He recognizes her. Noah told him that she is the White Devil. She wants to kill all of us, Helga says. Egon reassures him that the woman is dead. But she hasn't even started yet, Helga responds. In 1987, it is the day Egon is going to die. Realizing this, Claudia rushes to see him. She insists on joining him at his first chemo appointment. Egon reflects on his life. He thinks he did something very stupid, he says. He believes time travel is real. He believes that Ulrich is a time traveler that tried to reunite with his son, Mikkel. 
And Egon believes himself responsible for preventing the time traveler's reunion and return home. He's figured out the truth. At Egon's home, he continues to think of Ulrich. Why did he want to go to that cave? Could there be something there? Claudia insists there is nothing in the cave. Egon realizes she knows the truth. She is part of it. Egon decides he must call the station to have them search the caves. Claudia cannot allow this to go public. With little thought, she springs to action and kills her father. The time loop continues and events occur as they always have. On June 26th, 1987, Egon Tiedemann dies mysteriously in his home. Claudia remembers what her older self told her. She would have to make sacrifices so that her daughter Regina could live. She accepts that her father must die. With his dying words, Egon tells Claudia that she is the White Devil. In 2020, older Jonas wakes up and sees his time machine is gone. Hannah has taken it. At the Doppler home, Charlotte relays what she learned from Noah to Peter. Tomorrow, the world will end, and only those in the bunker will survive. She also tearfully tells Peter that her mother is alive. Clausen visits the nuclear plant and arrests Alexander Tiedemann on suspicion of identity theft. In the interrogation room, Clausen finally reveals his true intentions. His brother vanished years earlier in 1986. His brother's name was Alexander Cooler, the same as Alexander's assumed name. A couple of months ago, Clausen received an anonymous letter stating that the truth around his brother's disappearance can be found in Winden. He suspects Alexander killed Clausen's brother and stole his identity. Magnus, Marta, and the others, knowing time travel to be real, debate their next move. Finding St. Christopher's medal, Marta believes Jonas is back and they should track him down. He'll know more than they do. Magnus and Francisca suggest they should tell someone else what they've learned. Angry with Bartosz, Marta says whatever they do next, he isn't a part of it. She storms off and heads to the Conwald residence, where she finds a stranger waiting. Marta is looking for Hannah and doesn't know this man. She turns to leave and mentions that she has a feeling of deja vu. A glitch in the Matrix, Jonas says. He said the same thing on the night Mikkel disappeared. This stranger is an older Jonas. While they talk, Katarina breaks into the house. She separates them and angrily tells Marta the truths she's learned about Jonas and Mikkel, that Marta is Jonas's aunt. Katarina is looking for the time machine so she can retrieve Mikkel from the past. Jonas says it is missing and that Hannah took it. But Marta tells Katarina they have one, the one from Bartosz. At the Doppler home, Francisca, Elizabeth, and Magnus tell Peter and Charlotte about the time machine and how they used it. Charlotte tells them they should stay out of all this, and Francisca becomes angry when she learns Peter and Charlotte knew about time travel already. She's sick of all the secrets and lies. As they argue, Magnus receives a call from Marta and learns Jonas is back and older. Marta, Magnus, and Katerina reconvene with the device from Bartosz. Katerina takes it. Hannah uses Jonas's time machine and travels to 1954. She claims to be Ulrich's husband and convinces Egon to allow a brief meeting between them. At the prison, they meet. Ulrich has to ask a few times before he believes it's really her. For a moment, Hannah is happy to see him. Then, Ulrich asks about Mikkel and Katerina. He asks about his other children, Marta and Magnus. He asks about everyone except her. Disappointed, Hannah asks who he would choose between her and Katerina right now. Ulrich lies to her. He says he loves her. He'll leave Katerina if she gets him out. He begs Hannah to get him out of there. Coldly, Hannah walks away and tells Egon she was mistaken. This man is not her husband. Back in his office, Egon asks if Hannah will be leaving soon. No, she's looking for a fresh start. He lights her cigarette for her and Egon smiles. In 1987, he bleeds to death while his daughter watches. In 1921, Claudia, the white devil, is a corpse in a morgue. After murdering her father, a shaken Claudia returns home. 
She cleans blood from her hands and weeps until Jonas arrives. Jonas tells Claudia that he knows what she did, but also tells her that, according to the older Claudia, it doesn't have to happen the same way next time. Jonas asks her to come with him. When Claudia asks where they're going, he tells her they are going to the future. Jonas explains that his future self tried to close the hole and reverse everything. He shut the passage but didn't break the loop. Older Claudia explained that they could change a small part of the equation, so in the next cycle, Jonas could be successful. All of this won't happen. Mikkel won't disappear. Michael won't die. Claudia's father will live. Jonas extracts cesium from one of the yellow barrels and explains that big and small things don't abide by the same laws. The big things can't be changed, but maybe small things can. She and Jonas will change a grain of sand, and with it, the whole world. Jonas is going to open the passage in the tunnels once again. He reveals that over the last 12 months, after leaving his father behind and following the older Claudia, he studied with her. He learned everything about the past and future. He learned that Adam wants to create a new world, while Jonas and Claudia want to save this one. It is June 27th, 2020, the day of the apocalypse. Older Jonas grabs the gun Hannah left behind and goes to Marta's home. He tells Marta that the future starts in a few hours, a new cycle. She has to come with him. He begs her to believe him, to trust him, she pulls away and asks him to leave. Jonas refuses. He won't see her die again. With Hannah's gun, he forces her to comply. At gunpoint, Marta goes to the Doppler family bunker. She must remain there if she is to survive the apocalypse. He promises Marta that her Jonas will return and begs her not to leave the bunker under any circumstances. Then he apologizes and leaves. Alexander Tiedemann is still being held by the police. Clausen accepts he may not be able to prove he murdered his brother, but armed with a search warrant for the nuclear plant, he'll figure out what is happening there. Bartosz tells his mother Regina that her mother visited and said she was sorry. He hands her the photo Claudia left behind. Bartosz kisses his mother goodbye and leaves, promising to return. Searching for the device taken from him, Bartosz finds Magnus and Francisca. They tell him that their mother has the device. Bartosz worries that he messed up, but Francisca wonders if he did exactly what he was meant to. Perhaps his task was to show his friends how the device works. He runs off in search of the machine. Katerina, with the device in hand, goes to the Conwalds' home in search of Jonas. She doesn't find him, but does find his map of the caves, the futuristic flashlight, and a Geiger counter. She grabs the supplies and leaves. On her way out, she notices Michael's photo album. She looks through it for a glimpse at Mikkel growing up, something she never got to see. Then older Jonas arrives, and Katerina asks him to show how the device works. She asks how to bring Mikkel back. Jonas tells her it would be impossible. Things in the past can't be changed. Because Jonas already exists, Mikkel can't return. Katerina snaps that Jonas shouldn't even exist in the first place. He agrees, but has no choice. His future already exists. However, he thinks aloud, even if he can't stop himself from becoming Adam, perhaps he can stop Adam from achieving his plans. In the tunnels, Jonas and Claudia crawl through the Sigmundus door. At the police station, Torben confides in Charlotte that he helped Alexander hide radioactive waste at the nuclear plant. Hearing this, she realizes the plant is where the apocalypse will be triggered. With said apocalypse mere hours away, Peter takes his daughter Elizabeth to the bunker. She does not want to leave her sister Francisca or her mother Charlotte behind, but with time running out, they have no choice but to go and hope the others join them later. Only those in the bunker will survive. At the nuclear plant, Clausen notices a sealed door and insists on seeing what's behind it. At Sigmundus, Noah confronts Adam, saying that he never intended to save any of them. Noah throws the missing pages on the ground in front of Adam. He points a gun and pulls the trigger to no avail. Adam then reveals another truth. He shows Noah a picture of Elizabeth. Adam tells Noah, Charlotte is your daughter. She is Elizabeth's daughter. 
and her mother. In a strange paradox, Elizabeth and Noah will have a child together. This child, Charlotte, will grow up and eventually birth Elizabeth, who in turn will grow up to have a child with Noah named Charlotte. It is another time loop. Elizabeth is her own grandmother. An older Magnus and Francisca, along with Agnes, enter the room. The knot can only be undone by destroying it entirely, Adam says. Agnes turns off the safety of the pistol and shoots her brother Noah through the chest. He falls to the floor and bleeds. Then Adam prepares to enter the God Particle and travel to Jonas' time in 2020. In the tunnel under Winden Cave, with Claudia next to him, Jonas inserts the cesium and activates the device. Its effects are felt across time and space. The passage older Jonas closed is opening again. Katarina believes this gives her a chance to rescue Mikkel. She takes the device and runs to the cave. Peter and Elizabeth make their way to the bunker, freeing Marta, who runs off. Exiting the cave in 2020, Jonas gives Claudia the device and tells her she must bring it to the bunker while Jonas looks for his mother and Marta. Two hours remain until the apocalypse. Before making her way to the bunker, Claudia visits her daughter, Regina. She apologizes for leaving her as a child then brings her to the bunker where they join Peter and Elizabeth. Peter recognizes Claudia as the younger version of the woman who guided him and Trant. At the nuclear plant, at Clausen's request, they begin to excavate the barrels. Older Jonas waits at his mother's home. Young Noah finds him and hands him a letter from Marta. Jonas reads the letter. Whatever he reads shocks him as he says, This is impossible. Noah tells Jonas he must save Bartosz, Magnus, and Francisca, then later him and Agnes. The loop has to be closed so the next cycle can begin, so that Marta can live. The older Jonas leaves in a hurry. In 2053, Elizabeth crosses the wall to enter the dead zone. In 2020, Charlotte and Torben arrive at the nuclear plant. Young Jonas arrives at his mother's home and finds Marta. It's been a year since he last saw her. Since then, Marta has learned a lot. She knows about Mikkel, and she knows it was this Jonas that kissed her at the lake. Marta tells him they are a perfect match, and they kiss until they are interrupted by the familiar voice of an old, broken Jonas. Adam arrives. You lied to me, Jonas shouts. You wanted it all to happen again. Jonas begs to know why, and Adam explains that what is created today is the beginning of the end. The dark matter must be created so Adam, in the future, can lead it to its new purpose, the end of the world. Then, to ensure Jonas feels the pain that will turn him into Adam, he points a gun at Marta and pulls the trigger. She dies in Jonas's arms. Adam tells Jonas he will carry this pain for the rest of his life until he's finally ready to let go of it and her. Charlotte arrives at the nuclear plant in time to try and stop Clausen, but fails. The barrels are opened. They watch helplessly as the dark matter rises. The older Jonas finds Magnus, Bartosz, and Francisca. It's all your fault, Bartosz says. Jonas agrees, but he is there to save them from the apocalypse. In 2053, Elizabeth stabilizes the God Particle. In 2020, Katarina sees the effects in the Winden Cave. She follows the strange blue light to the sick Mundus door. She opens it and is flooded with a bright light. Young Noah joins Claudia, Regina, Peter, and Elizabeth in the bunker where they await the end of the world. At the nuclear plant, a portal opens between 2020 and 2053. Charlotte sees her daughter and mother, Elizabeth. They reach out to each other as Charlotte is pulled into the portal. Older Jonas's device activates. Bartosz demands to know where they're going, but Jonas does not reply. Young Jonas promises the dead Marta that he will save her. Standing above them is another Marta. I'm not who you think I am, she says. She activates a device similar to Jonas's time machine and promises to explain later. What time are you from? Jonas asks. Marta replies, The question isn't from what time, but from what world. Jonas takes one last look at his Marta's lifeless body, and then the world ends. 
If you made it all the way to the end of this recap, congratulations, you're ready to watch season three when it releases. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video. Thanks for watching and see you on the next One Take.